The Nazi regime in Germany was one of the bloodiest in human history, but beneath the shadows of war and the echoes of bombs, some innovations emerged that totally changed the world. What technological marvel is hidden in the Nazi treasure chest? And how did German scientists alter the landscape of medical science, food engineering, and even the automobile industry? Join us as we peel back the pages of history, uncovering 20 things Nazis invented and you didn't know. Number 20. Volkswagen Beetle The Volkswagen Beetle is considered the best-selling car of all time but very few people are aware of its true origin. During his reign over Germany, Hitler dreamed of building a reliable car that the hard-working German families could afford. To further this vision, he met with car designer Ferdinand Porsche in 1935 to discuss the possibility of developing a car anyone and everyone could buy, which would also be easy to maintain and capable of traveling quickly on the Autobahn, which was springing up around Germany. This was the birth of the VW Beetle, a revolutionary car design that combined simplicity with practicality. It was known as the People's Car, a direct translation of the name Volkswagen, and it soon caught the attention of rival nations. This rear-engined, air-cooled car would later become a symbol of peace and love in the dawn of American hippie culture, straying far away from its troubled roots. Today, the Volkswagen company set up by the Nazi regime is currently the largest car company in the world, with several other car brands like Lamborghini, Audi, Bentley, and Porsche currently under their umbrella. Over the years, Volkswagen has gradually transformed its image from a propaganda machine built to boost the war effort to a reliable car manufacturer with roots in every country around the world. Number 19. Fanta as the Second World War raged on, Germany was slammed with sanctions after sanctions, and this affected every single aspect of the economy. One of the American companies hit by the effects of these sanctions was Coca-Cola. By the time Hitler and the Third Reich marched into Austria, Coca-Cola had been producing its beloved soda for nearly a decade. But after Pearl Harbor, all American companies were forced to stop their business activities in Germany, and the Coca-Cola brand, which at this point was the most popular soda in Germany, were left to deal with the biting effects of the war. Supplies stopped coming from America to the German factories, and consequently they couldn't make Coca-Cola. So, Max Keith, the man in charge of the German division, decided to cook up a new kind of soda using anything and everything that was available. Working with his chemists, Keith put together a recipe made from leftovers of other food industries. Food shavings, apple fibers and pulp, beet sugar, and a whole lot of other ingredients. What resulted was this concoction that came to be known as Fanta, although it's very different from the kind of Fanta we have today. The name was coined from the German word fantasy, because Keith instructed his team to use their imagination. Fanta eventually saved the Coca-Cola company in Germany from closing down, and after the war, the Nazi invention was slowly integrated into the mainstream Coca-Cola market around the world. Number 18. Nerve Agents the bloody days of the Second World War was a time of experimentation, when brilliant scientists combined their geniuses to create some of the deadliest weapons mankind has ever seen. One of these was the nerve agents developed by the Nazis as part of their chemical warfare program. Although the first nerve agents were introduced in the 1930s, when German researchers were trying to make a cheaper and better alternative to nicotine as insecticides, the war gave the Nazis the opportunity to try out other uses of these dangerous chemicals. Through extensive study, Nazi scientists discovered that even a minuscule amount of these chemicals caused devastating effects on the human body, and so a new kind of weapon was born. Nerve agents are usually absorbed through inhalation or skin contact, and their effects are almost always deadly. The symptoms of chemical poisoning are usually immediate, chest tightening, difficulty in breathing, and at the end of the day, asphyxiation leading to certain death. The most prominent of these were tabun and sarin, which were handed over to the Nazi army armed forces known as Wehrmacht. Factories were quickly set up to manufacture these deadly weapons. But fortunately, the war ended before they became functional. Some say the Nazis didn't use chemical weapons due to fear of retaliation. Others say the weapons weren't ready yet. Regardless of the real reason they weren't used, nerve agents remain one of the deadliest weapons ever developed. And over the years, even deadlier chemical weapons have been invented both by Germany and other powerful nations, in spite of the worldwide ban on its research and development. Number 17. Night Vision Back in the day, 
soldiers had to face the impossible task of navigating enemy territories and fighting in pitch-black darkness. To give them an advantage in nighttime combats, German scientists set out to develop a new technology that would help soldiers see better and fight better in the dark. And as early as 1939, the tech was done and ready for use. There was the ZG-1229 Vampire, a small piece of equipment that weighed 5 pounds and was fitted with lugs at the weapons production factories. Soldiers who operated these night vision guns were known as the Night Hunters, and they played a huge role in many of the German military campaigns. In addition to the sight and infrared spotlight, the Vampire also had a wooden cased battery for the light, as well as a second battery inside a gas mask mask container, which helped power the image converter. This incredible searchlight consisted of a conventional tungsten light source shining through a filter permitting only infrared light. However, the sensor was not sensitive to body heat since it operated in the upper infrared light spectrum rather than in the lower spectrum. The night vision device saw extensive use during the war, and some Nazi tanks were even equipped with it at some point. However, not long after German soldiers started using it, the war was over, and the tech has since seen significant advancement, both in military use and in other fields. Number 16. RPGs the Panzerschreck was a Nazi weapon used by Germany during the Second World War, and it was one of the first rocket-propelled grenades to be used in war. The Panzerschreck featured a lightweight steel tube about 5 feet long and weighed about 20 pounds. It was capable of launching a 7-pound rocket-propelled grenade, enabling the Nazi army to carry out more brazen attacks with devastating effects. The grenade launcher worked quite similarly to the American bazooka, which Germany claimed it didn't copy from. However, the resemblance is too obvious to ignore. After loading the rocket in the tube and aiming the weapon at the target, the operator pulls two triggers, one to cock the ignition system and the other to fire the grenade. To protect the soldier from the rocket's back blast, the weapon is held on the shoulder with about half the tube protruding forward, but it could only go as far as 500 feet, carrying a grenade that was powerful enough to penetrate 8.25 inches of armor, which was thicker than any of the Allied tanks. The development of the German RPGs altered the landscape of battle, and it set the precedent for the development of even more advanced weaponry of its kind. Number 15. The V-2 Rocket Although World War II was one of the bloodiest conflicts the world has ever seen, it also gave rise to a number of inventions that were developed for malicious purposes, but found use in other technological applications, like the V-2 rocket, a German ballistic missile that was developed to give Nazi Germany an edge over its adversaries. It was in 1936 when a group of scientists led by Werner von Bruen completed the development of this engineering marvel, and on October 3, 1942, the first V-2 rocket was successfully launched. It was the first long-range guided ballistic missile, and it changed the game in Germany's favor for a while. On September 6, 1944, the first V-2 was launched against Paris, and just two days later, Germany began the bombardment of Britain with over 1,100 V-2s, taking the lives of over 5,000 people. The V-2 missiles were about 47 feet long, and weighed between 28,000 and 29,000 pounds at launch, with a payload of up to 1,600 pounds. After the war was over, other nations around the world took the V-2 technology, studied it extensively, and incorporated it into the fascinating machines that took mankind to space. So, even though it was developed for destruction, it eventually played a huge role in one of mankind's most monumental achievements. Number 14. Jerry Cans the Germans called it Wehrmacht Einheitskanister, but to the rest of the world it was simply known as a Jerry Can, mostly because the Germans were referred to as Jerry. Most people don't know this, but these fuel containers were actually developed in 1937 by the Mueller engineering firm in Schwelm, Germany. The Jerry Can was designed by the firm's chief engineer, Vincenz Grunvogel, and although it might look like an insignificant invention, the impact of the development helped both Nazi forces and the Allies in more ways than they can imagine. It helped transport fuel, which was critical for the Nazi war machines, tanks, and other automobiles, as well as. The Jerry Can differed from its predecessors, since it didn't require the use of a funnel or other tools. The rectangular shape also made it quite stackable, and the three handles made it possible to be hoisted by either one or two soldiers. The Nazi Jerry Cans were made of metal, 
and they featured recessed welded seams, which protected them from impact damage. The Americans soon saw the effectiveness of the jerry can in transporting fuel and water, and soon they developed their own version with only slight variations, and so did other nations on the opposing side. After the war, the jerry remained an invaluable tool in homes around the world, as well as industries, and it remains one of the most unforgettable inventions that emerged from the Second World War. Number 13. Chloroquine Chloroquine is a medication used to prevent and treat malaria, as well as other amoebiasis. However, did you know that this drug was developed by the Nazis in 1934? It all started after World War I, when the German government tried developing a new alternative to quinine, another medication that was used to treat malaria. It was discovered by a man named Hans Andersag and his co-workers at the Bayer's laboratory, and they named it Risochin. However, for the next decade, the drug was ignored as it was considered too toxic for human use. That would eventually change as the bitter days of World War II rolled in, prompting the German government to explore its use in treating its German Africa Corps, who were suffering greatly from the effects of the malaria outbreak. An analog of the chloroquine known as Santuchin was developed for this purpose, and after the Allied forces took over Tunis, Santuchin fell into the hands of the American forces, who took it back to the United States for further testing. After confirming its significant anti-malarial properties, the U.S. government introduced chloroquine into clinical practice in 1947, and since then it remains one of the major drugs used for the prophylactic treatment of malaria till today. Number 12. Landkreuzer P1000 Ratte did you know that the Germans tried to build a massive tank that was five times the size of a regular tank during World War II? This is the Landkreuzer P-1000 Ratte, a concept that never challenged the limits of the imagination. The massive tank was proposed in June 1942 by Edward Grota, the director of Krupp. It was meant to be about 1,000 tons, surpassing Panzer VIII Maus, the heaviest tank ever built at the time. Adolf Hitler himself got to know about the project, and it piqued his interest. However, it was eventually cancelled in early 1943 by the Minister of Armaments Albert Speer. If it had been built, the Landkreuzer P-1000 Ratte would have been 36 feet tall, 46 feet wide, and require a crew of 20 just to operate. It was deemed an unrealistic project and scrapped before it ever saw the light of day. Number 11. 3D Filming Hitler invested a ton of money into his propaganda program, so it wasn't surprising to find out that his engineers pioneered works in the development of 3D filming. Surprisingly, Germany had already discovered this tech years before Hollywood began incorporating it into their productions. In a revelation released by the Australian filmmaker Philippe Mora, two Nazi propaganda films were recently discovered, which were shot in 3D way back in 1936. This was 16 years earlier than Hollywood's commercialization of the tech in 1953. Although 3D filming has increased in leaps and bounds since then and has infiltrated the media space from advertisements to infomercials and even blockbuster movies, its roots can be traced back to the dark days of Nazi Germany. Number 10. Borghild Project – Nazi Adult Toy one major problem the Nazi regime had to deal with during the war was the constant stream of sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis, spread by the soldiers' contact with sex workers in their spare time. To combat this growing problem and safeguard the Nazi soldiers from temptations that might lead to deadly diseases, Hitler initiated an initiative known as the Borghild Project. The plan was to manufacture and distribute blow-up dolls that would serve as a more hygienic alternative to sex workers. This top-secret project was created in 1940 and was inspired by SS Chief Heinrich Himmler, who was the first to bring the syphilis situation to Hitler's attention. The life-size dolls were designed to be small enough to fit into a soldier's backpack, and, believe it or not, they even made it into production. However, turns out most of the soldiers weren't willing to go into battle with an adult toy out of fear of embarrassment if they were ever captured. Today, many people claim the story is a hoax, while others believe it actually happened, but since it was a top-secret operation, it's hard to verify whether it's true or not. Number 9. Z4 Computers the Z4 is the world's first commercial digital computer and the oldest programmable computer. It was developed by a civil engineer and computer scientist named Konrad Zuse with funding from the German Air Ministry. 
His Z series of computers were some of the most incredible computers ever invented, and they set the stage for more advancements in computer technology. It all started with Zuse's vision of building a computer that could function as more than a calculating machine. The construction of the Z4 began in 1943, and the resulting computer used electromagnetic relays, and it was capable of solving engineering and mathematical problems that were too complex for the human mind. It also utilized the first real computer programming language known as the Plancalcul, or simply Plain Calculus, which made computer programming faster, easier, and more efficient. Number 8. Einheirsempfänger, the Nazi television. It was in August 1939 when this new invention was first introduced. They called it the Einheirs Fernse Empfänger E1, which simply translates to TV Receiver E1. Some also called it the Volksfernseher, or the People's TV. But even though it doesn't look like much today, this was a revolutionary invention back in the day, and it helped push Nazi propaganda to a whole new level. Although the television had been invented years before the Nazi regime began, the production of the Nazi version was a pivotal move in Germany, and it helped boost support for the war effort. The research for this project started in 1938, undertaken by the Reichspost and several companies, including Bosch, Blaupunkt, Löwe, Lorenz, and so on. The objective was to produce 10,000 units to be distributed to homes, offices, and military bases across Germany during the Second World War. However, by the time the war ended, only about 50 devices had been produced, and they were majorly installed in military hospitals and various government facilities. The TVs were tuned from the factory to broadcast Hitler's speeches, as well as Nazi propaganda, ensuring that the German government had the people on their side through widespread deception and lies that were further exacerbated by the invention of this television set. Technology has improved dramatically since then, but you can still find a few surviving and functioning units in museums across Germany, a testament to the technological advancement that emerged from the bloody times of World War II. Number 7. Volksempfänger, the People's Receiver Similar to the People's TV was another invention produced with the same goal of spreading war propaganda, Volksempfänger or the People's Receiver. This lineup of cheap radio receivers was developed by a Nazi engineer named Otto Griesing at the request of Joseph Goebbels, the then Minister of Propaganda. The purpose was to make radio reception technology available to every household in Germany so the message of hate and warmongering could be spread faster and more effectively. The first model of this radio was presented on August 18, 1933, and was available for the price of 76 Reichsmark which was about two weeks' average salary at the time. The radio receiver was heavily promoted, with posters encouraging the people to purchase, so they directly accessed Hitler's constant addresses. Although this wasn't the first radio receiver to be invented, it became one of the first widespread examples of its usage, and thanks to its low cost, most households in Germany had one, although you could only listen to Nazi stations. Tuning into foreign media was a criminal offense in those days, and punishment ranged from confiscation of the radio to capital punishment. Number 6. World's First Fighter Jet Meet the Messerschmitt Me-262 Schwalbe, also known as the world's first mass-produced fighter jet. The development of this revolutionary design can be traced back to Adolf Hitler himself and his desire to build a wonder weapon capable of bombing the Allies. The design phase started in April 1939, before the first shot of World War II was fired. On April 18, 1941, the ME-262 made its maiden flight with a piston engine, and over a year later, on July 18, 1942, it finally made its first jet-powered flight. This was a monumental moment in history, as it marked the beginning of a new era in military technology and aviation. At the time it was introduced, the ME-262 was faster, stronger, and more heavily armed than any Allied fighter, and it remains one of the most advanced combat aircraft built during the Second World War. It could also perform several functions, including working as a light bomber, a reconnaissance aircraft, and even an experimental night fighter the ME-26. Two altered the landscape of the war and gave the Germans an edge over the Allies. However, it was also plagued by reliability issues, as well as its inability to carry a considerable amount of fuel. Over the years, fighter jets have become more advanced than you can imagine, with capabilities that will put the ME-262 to shame, however, its legacy remains etched in the fine prints of history, and many of the fascinating fighter jets of today find inspiration from this Nazi war machine. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. 
The Second World War was one of the most brutal conflicts mankind has ever witnessed, causing the death of millions of people, both soldiers and civilians. However, this chapter in human history also saw significant advancements like the concoction of a new recipe we all know as Fanta. Like many of the products developed during the Second World War, Fanta was born out of necessity, and even though it's been many years since then, and it has become one of the most popular soda brands in the world, its history is still tied with the brutal regime of Adolf Hitler. It's a testament to how something good can come out of something horrible. Which of these inventions shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's get back to the video. Number 5. The Intramedullary Rod Apart from military technology and propaganda machines, the Nazis also delved into the world of medical science, pioneering new advancements and introducing new medical procedures. A good example is the intramedullary rod, also known as the intramedullary nail, developed in 1939 by a German scientist named Gerhard Kuncher. During World War II, many soldiers suffered from fractures of the femur, and even though there were established procedures for taking care of these kinds of injuries, they weren't as effective as the Nazis wanted them to be. After being treated using traction or plaster, soldiers often had to endure long periods of inactivity, which the army couldn't cope with. So, German scientists were tasked with developing a new way to help broken bones heal faster, so the wounded soldiers could return to war as soon as possible. It was behind this backdrop that the intramedullary rod was introduced, and it changed everything. This titanium or stainless steel rod was inserted into the canal of the bone either at the hip or the knee, and then screwed in place to keep the broken bone in the proper position during the healing process. This way, soldiers could quickly return to war sometimes after just a few weeks. Not surprisingly, the usage of the IM rods expanded beyond the Second World War, and even today it remains a relatively useful tool in medical care. Number 4. Horton, Ho 229. Back in 1943, the head of the Luftwaffe, Hermann Göring, made a call to all German manufacturers to develop light bombers with these requirements. It must be capable of carrying bombs weighing over 2,200 pounds over a distance of 620 miles at a speed of 620 miles per hour. At the time, only jet propulsion engines could achieve such speeds, but the downside was that those engines used a whole lot of fuel, which was a huge challenge. The Horton brothers eventually undertook the project, resulting in the development of the Horton Ho 229 a turbojet engine stealth warcraft that was way ahead of its time. This flying wing featured an aerodynamic design that made it capable of sneaking into enemy territories while evading detection by radars. However, the project was met with eventual failure after the last working prototype was destroyed in a crash on February 18, 1945. Although it never made it to mass production, the Nazis' stealth aircraft blazed the trail for other advanced stealth aircraft of its kind, and it remains one of the most advanced concepts to emerge from the dark ages of World War II. Number 3. The Enigma Machine The Enigma Machine was another incredible invention developed by Germany for delivering the most top-secret messages. The original version of this remarkable piece of engineering was invented by a German engineer named Arthur Scherbius at the end of the First World War. As the Second World War rolled in, it became integrated into every aspect of the German military force as the most secure means of communication between troops and senior members of the government. Hitler and his scientists made several new advancements to this machine, making it harder to decrypt for the enemy forces. However, allied nations like Poland would eventually crack the Enigma's code, making it relatively useless in transmitting encrypted messages and intel. British cryptologists also worked extensively on understanding the machine, and they were able to decrypt a number of messages which turned the tides of war in their favor. In response to constantly being decrypted, Nazi Germany kept changing tactics and making necessary adjustments to the system to maintain its integrity. But this didn't stop the Allies from cracking the codes over and over, decrypting the Enigma cipher and gaining access to the classified intel of the Nazi regime. Number 2. Pervitin. As Hitler waged his terrible war against some of the most powerful nations in the world, the Third Reich became more and more desperate, leading to some policies that would generally be frowned upon in our world today. One of those policies was the prescription of hard drugs to soldiers on the battlefield so as to enhance their physical capabilities and reduce fatigue. 
Pervitin, an early form of methamphetamine, was one of those drugs widely used by Nazi soldiers, and you could even get it without a prescription. Considering how much the world has suffered from meth addiction since then, it makes us question why Hitler and his cohorts thought it was a good idea to drug the soldiers up so they could keep fighting in a senseless war without sleeping, resting, or questioning anything they were being told. The use of pervitin by the soldiers was actively encouraged during the later stages of the war, as the Nazi army became increasingly depleted and they had to rely on stimulated soldiers to keep up the momentum. It increased their self-confidence, heightened their sense of alertness, and made them willing to take risks while reducing the sensations of hunger, pain, and the need for sleep. The rest of the German population were not exempted from this drug epidemic that was sponsored by the government, and it exemplifies the depth of depravity that occurs in times of war and armed conflicts. Number 1. Electroboot As the tides of war turned against Germany, they turned to the drawing board, crafting wonder weapons that could maybe help them salvage whatever was left. One of the products of such endeavors was the Electroboot, the first submarine to operate primarily submerged rather than being a surface vessel. Up until this time, most submarines of the day stayed on the surface for the most part and were only submerged when they needed to attack. However, the Electroboot, also known as the Type Tixkitam U-Boat, was capable of spending several days submerged, and it was such a marvel when it first came out. The submarine was also quite fast for the time, reaching a speed of 17 knots or 30 miles per hour. Also, Unlike other submersibles of the time, the electric U-boat could be charged at periscope depth without having to surface, further increasing its stealth capabilities, which made it stand out above the rest. It would eventually set the stage for the development of other submersibles of its kind, and today, it remains a source of inspiration in the design and development of underwater warfare machines. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.